In this problem, we're told to move a large crate across a rough floor. You push on it with a force F at an angle of 21 degrees below the horizontal, as shown in this figure. Find the force necessary to start the crate moving, given that the mass of the crate is 32 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction between the crate and the floor is 0.57. So as usual, you always want to draw what's going on. So we have this crate, which is 32 kilograms, and we're going to be applying a force that's going to be 21 degrees above the horizontal right here. And we also know that the coefficient of static friction between the floor and the crate is going to be 0.57. So the way we're going to solve this problem is first by labeling the forces that are going to be acting on it. So basically just draw the free body diagram. So we have the force of gravity, which is just going to be mg. So this is just going to be the weight force. We also have a normal force because it's going to be touching this object. And then we're also going to have uh, the force of friction because we know the coefficient of static friction is 0.57. So there's going to be some force of friction that's going to be going the opposite of where we're trying to push it. And so what we're trying to do is go, uh, we're trying to find the solve uh, for the force F. So we're trying to find F. So let's just say F is question mark. And the way we're going to solve for F is by first understanding how this works. So we're trying to find F given that we can push the object. So basically we're trying to find the minimum value of F so that we're able to push it. So if we think about it, right, what, uh, what forces are opposing the way we're trying to move it? So there's only going to be one force that's acting in the opposite direction, which is going to be the force of friction. So if we want to overcome this, right, if our force wants to overcome this, we want to be able to be greater than the force of friction in the x direction, which basically means that the x component of this force has to be greater than the force of friction. So hopefully you understand that. But the way we can do it mathematically is the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to zero. The reason this is is because by Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. But in this case, the object's not moving. So the sum of the forces are just going to be equal to zero. And then you just say zero, and then we want to find all the forces in the x direction. So as I said earlier, we have the force of friction. So the force of friction, and I'm labeling it negative because it's going the opposite direction we're pushing. And then we also have another force in the x direction, which is the x component of the force that we're pushing. And so the way we find x, I'm also going to label y because we're going to need it too. So what we're going to do now is find the x and y components of this force. Uh, and so the way we do that is just by drawing a triangle. And so this triangle is just going to be this one right here. So we know the angle at, yeah, the angle of our triangle is 21 degrees because this one's 21 degrees above the horizontal. And the hypotenuse is just the value f, right? The force we're going to be applying. And so the x and y is what we're going to be solving for. So the x and y components, and the way we do this by using trig, so we know the cosine of an angle, in this case it's 21, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over f. So x over f, that just means the x, or the x component is just going to be the uh, force, right? The, basically the resultant times the cosine of 21. So that's going to be our x component. And then for the y, we know the sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is y over hypotenuse is f. So multiply both sides by f, and you're going to get the y component. So basically, you just want to take um, this part right here, f, and then multiply by the cosine for x and then the sine for y. So now that we have the x component, we're going to write it right here, right? It's going to be uh, plus because it's going in the direction we're trying to move it. Right, opposite of the for, uh, force of friction. So plus F times the cosine of 21. So what this means, if we move the force of friction to the other side, F times the cosine of 21 has to be equal to the force of friction. And so what is force of friction equal to? So the formula for the force of friction uh, is equal to mu sub S times F sub N. So it's gonna be the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So that means F is gonna be the cosine of 21 which equals the force of friction, which is mu sub s times f sub n. So if we want to solve for f, we need to find f sub n because we still have mu sub s, which is just 0.57. They give us that. So now what we want to do is find the normal force. And the way we do that is by taking, or in this part, we did the sum of the forces in the x. So now we're going to do the y. So some of the forces in the y are going to be equal to ma, Newton's second law, but it's going to be equal to zero because we're not moving at all. So zero equals, and then what forces do we have in the y? So we have three forces, the normal force, the force or the weight force. And then we also have the y component of uh, the force we're applying. So if they're going upwards, you label them positive. If it's going down, it's negative. So we're going to write 0 equals f sub n minus mg because it's going down. And then if we look at this force, the y component is going to be going down because this force is going down. So minus mg. And then the y component of this is f times the sine of 21. So minus f times the sine of 21. So now we have the normal force, we have um, the weight force, and then we also have this one. So what this tells us is F sub n, if we add these to the other side, it's just mg plus f times the sine of 21. 
So now we have the normal force and we can plug it in. So it's just going to be F times the cosine of 21 equals mu sub S times mg plus F times the sine of 21. And so what you should notice is now what we can do is go ahead and solve for F because this is going to be the value that we want to find, right? So uh, the way we're going to solve for F is by uh, manipulating this equation by, so I'll show you. So we do F times the cosine of 21. Notice there's two F, so we can't just solve for it. We got to make sure we cancel out one of them. So if we do mu sub S times MG, it's just mu sub S times MG. And then we multiply it here. It's going to be plus F or mu sub S, sorry, mu sub S times F times the sine of 21. And so all we did was multiply it out. And now what we're going to do is move this to the other side. So minus mu sub s times f times the sine of 21. And so we minus it to the, uh, this side. So mu sub s times f times the sine of 21. And you're going to get f times the cosine of 21 minus mu sub s times f times the sine of 21 is equal to mu sub s times mg. Because notice these canceled. So what we want to do now is factor out the f, so we only have one f in the equation. So factoring it out, you get f, so I'm factoring out the f, so it's going to be f times the cosine of 21, and then it's just going to be minus mu sub s, minus mu sub s times, we factor out an f, so it's just times the sine of 21, and then equals mu sub s times mg. So yeah, we just had to do a bit of, a bit of manipulating, and then if we want to solve for f, just divide. So I'm actually going to erase what we have on screen now, but uh, write it down if you need it. So all it's going to become is, so I'm going to erase, so F is going to be equal to uh, mu sub S times mg all over the cosine of 21 minus mu sub S times the sine of 21. So all I did was divide. And so... Now what we've got is this formula. So all we have to do is just plug in to solve. So keep in mind mu sub s, what it was, mu sub s was equal to uh, 0.57. So 0.57, we knew m was, or the mass of the crate was 32 kilograms. And then g is just 9.8. So that's just a number you need to know. It's the acceleration due to gravity. You can use 9.81 if you like. I'm just gonna use 9.8 though. And then, yeah, all we have to do is just plug in now. So mu sub s is gonna be 0.57 times the mass, which is 32 times g, which is 9.8. And then you want to divide by the cosine of 21 minus mu sub s times uh, the sine of 21. So 0.57 times the sine of 21. So if you go ahead and do this, 0.57 times 32 times 9.8, you're going to get, so 0.57 times 32, let me plug it in. And then divide, sorry about this, sine of 21. So yeah, you're going to get it equals to about 245, so 245.097. If you want to use 9.81, you're going to get a little bit of a different answer, but uh, it's just going to be a little bit off. So it's going to be about 245. So 245, and then we measure force in newtons. So 245 newtons, that's going to be the force required. Uh, to move it, right? So F equals 245 newtons. Uh, this is gonna be your answer and hopefully you found this useful.